I think get ahead of the situation. Um, start planning weaning 30 days out. Know that you've got your drugs on hand. Know that you've got your facilities in working order so that it's not hard to get cattle up and doctor them if they need it. Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversation podcast, where we talk about all things related to ranching by connecting you to peer ranchers and industry leaders to improve the profitability of your operation and your lifestyle. Now, if you are looking for a community of ranchers, sign up for my monthly Rancher Mind events. Rancher Mind events are mastermind events for ranchers. You join a Zoom link and you sit down and have a conversation with other ranchers and industry leaders about specific topics that help you improve your operation and face the challenges that we face as an industry as a whole. Now, if you want immediate ranch management advice, go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com slash newsletter and sign up. When you sign up, I will send you a free PDF with 22 ranch management tips from the ranching gurus who have been on my show and poured out their knowledge for all to hear. With that, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram by following Cattle Convos. You can connect with me there or you can go to my website, casualcattleconversations.com to find anything you may need. I'm excited to meet you. Well, good morning, Buddy and Adam. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to talk about weaning cattle today, whether that's nutrition, animal health, or the technology side. I think we're going to cover it all today, or at least I'm going to ask questions so we cover it all today. So with yeah, that, sure. um, we'll start with Adam and then we'll have Buddy, but I'd like each of you to just share a sentence or two to introduce yourself and talk about what you're doing in the beef industry today. Uh, originally, I grew up in Tennessee. Uh, moved to Missouri, uh, began a, a career with ADM Animal Nutrition, uh, been with them currently uh, around eight years, um, still raise uh, Charlotte and Angus cattle on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, my wife and I, uh, and now we're located in uh, central eastern Kansas, so. Well, awesome. Now, buddy, you've been on the show before, but in case the listeners missed that episode, will you please introduce and share a little bit about yourself? Okay. I'm Buddy Rowley. I'm Director of Sales for the South and the West of Gallagher Animal Management. My wife and I also run a herd of Angus cows here in Kansas and are involved in day-to-day -day production agriculture as well as our jobs off the farm. So, Well, that is great to hear. So we're going to kind of get right into the topic of weaning today. And so to kind of start off, when producers are approaching weaning time, or maybe they're already in it, depending on the part of the country they're in, what are some of the main questions they need to be asking, asking themselves as they prepare to wean their calves? I think they need to start trying to decide maybe if they're going to wean today, they should have started working on this, uh, uh, you know, a month ago, uh, making sure they've had the proper vaccines, um, what kind of mineral those cattle were on. Uh, there are premixes to, to make those vaccines work better before going into weaning. And they need to know where they, they stand on weight. So you said there are, you know, you talked a lot about the nutrition side. So let's start there. Nutritionally, when we're looking at weaning calves, what do we need to be thinking about beforehand and why is that important? Can you dive deeper into, you know, why they really need to be aware of the nutritional plane of that calf before they're weaned? Uh, well, you know, sick cattle cost money. Uh, sick cattle do not eat as much, uh, so they do not gain as well. Uh, so we've got to have them nutritionally sound uh, and a sound body condition score, really, before you even wean. Uh, because it could be a train wreck. You can have uh, pneumonia. Uh, you're cutting them too soon or, or too quick. Uh, and just it just goes downhill from there, and you can have a total train wreck. So on the gut health side of things, when we look at that first diet after weaning, um, what is that kind of looking at? What do producers need to do when analyzing that or working with their nutritionist there? Uh, we use like a stress fighter 16 tub. Uh, it's a caramel based tub, cooked tub. 
Uh, it, it is sweet. Uh, we put it close to water just so that they uh, go to it, they lick on it, they have saliva, uh, it makes them drink a little quicker, uh, and then it makes them come right to the bunk too. I mean, it gives them some uh, good bugs in their belly uh, to help them cope with that weaning and that stress uh, so that they really don't lose any track. Okay. Now you talked about body condition score. So, you know, weaning is always usually centered around that calf. What about taking care of the cow as we lead up to weaning? What do producers want to be aware of for keeping her ideal body score and, um, you know, taking care of her as well in this process? Um, you know, majority of the country, especially out in the West, has been in a drought. Uh, so we have to look at those cows, study their body condition score, uh, see where they are to date, uh, and that may affect your weaning. You know, if you've got a set of cows that are in, in bad rig, uh, you may want to wean a little quicker to, to kind of give those cows a little more time to, to catch up before you ask them to calve again. Uh, you got to have a good body condition score to get those, those cows serviced as well. You'll have more open cows with thinner cows. So, okay. It all is a balancing act. So, yes. And it obviously depends on each individual's operation too and what they have the capacity for. So, Buddy, I want to tie you in on the technology side here. So, Adam made a comment earlier about knowing the weights of the cattle. So, would you talk a little bit about? what technology maybe producers should have on hand so that they do know where their cattle stand as far as weights? Well, I think you need to know, number one, what your calves weigh. And then after weaning, you need to weigh those cattle and know whether the feed you're feeding them is doing any good. I mean, how do you, if you're going to feed them 2% of their weight, how do you know what that is if you don't know what the calves weigh? Uh, we were weighing some cattle here the other day and guessing and having a big time. And we were missing some five weight calves, 10% of their body weight. Uh, that can either cost you a lot. Either way, it's going to cost you whether you're not feeding them enough or whether you're feeding them too much. You know. And then as we look back at a management, we need to know what that cow weighs and what percentage of her body weight is she weaning. Because that is a culling decision as we go down the road that we want to wean we want to cull the cows that are maybe the bottom 10% of our cow herd and bring the smallest calves into the pen. So as we start with a set of scales, the first time we weigh those calves, we grab a weight. And then with our Gallagher scales, every time you weigh them again, it automatically figures you an average daily gain off the dates. So we know whether we're doing any good with this feed we're feeding them. So Adam, <clears throat> Is there anything else you want to touch on on the nutrition side as far as the value of knowing the weights and regularly weighing those calves if you're backgrounding after you wean? Well, you know, it, it helps to make that ration to, to, you know, we start those, well, we are already creeping those calves before we wean them. So they know how to eat before we have the stressful time of taking them from their mothers. Um, what I would say is weighing those cattle at weaning, you know how much they're going to weigh. Uh, you know how to figure 2% of their body weight uh, to try to get them to that ration, to that amount of feed. Uh, something else Buddy touched on is weight on weighing those calves. Uh, it, it's simple as bringing a calf up that may be sick and doctoring right and not wasting drug or shooting it over. You know exactly what they weigh and it's easy to figure your drug level. So since you brought up the animal health standpoint in the sick calves, can you touch a little bit on, you know, what components of the animal health program producers, or excuse me, let me re-ask that. What questions do producers need to be asking themselves when it comes to the animal health component of the weaning process, as far as vaccinating in combination with nutrition, et cetera? Uh, I think it kind of works hand in hand. Um, uh, you need a good vaccination program. Uh, you need to study your vaccination program and, and try to reach out to help, you know, a local veterinarian or even a uh, uh, rep from a drug company to help you establish the right vaccines uh, and do a different combos of, of a live virus. Uh, and, and on our operation, we give two rounds of shots. Uh, also, something else as far as vaccination is deworming those cattle, uh, making sure they're 
Uh, you don't have worms fighting against them to gain the, the weight you need to gain, uh, especially it going into fall. Um, so vaccination, deworming follows right in hand in hand with the nutrition program. And we work closely with our local vet. We buy our vaccines from our veterinarian. Uh, that way, if we do get into a train wreck, they know what we have given. They know our protocol and they know where to start looking for a problem. And so, that's something else. We keep all that record in our scale head, shoot side. So when those calves come in and we type in or scan that EID tag, we've got a full history on that calf of what's happened. So many producers in the United States are faced with the unfortunate circumstance of drought this spring and summer. How have you seen them managing their herds differently for this weaning process? Uh, I think it's very important that, and going back to body condition score, uh, looking at those cattle, if the cattle start to decline for a drought, you have to supplement those, those cows. Um, keeping that maintenance level up, uh, cow roughly needs a, approximately 40 uh, pounds of dry matter a day. Um, so on a, on a herd basis, that's, that's quite a bit. So you may have to feed hay, cubes, or, or uh, distillers and corn to keep those girls in good shape. Uh, weaning early has happened uh, because of, of a cow's nutrition and, and trying to relieve those cows some pressure by taking those calves off earlier. And the sooner you identify that you've got a problem, right. the better. Right, and, and that's and it blows my mind as I go out and, and do farm visits and ranch visits. Uh, people do not stop and look at their cow herd enough. They, they get in such a routine that they're not looking at them. They're checking their mineral. They look at their eyes and they go to the next field. Look at those cows. Uh, make sure you're in good rig. And, you know, ask yourself some questions. I know it sounds simple, but really – really study your cow herd uh, and be honest with yourself. Well, I think that's all great advice. And I, you know, I personally don't have a problem spending any extra time looking at cows, I guess, checking pastures at night is one of my favorite things to do. So as we kind of round out the interview today, just to kind of summarize things, we've really talked about the importance of animal health and building a relationship with your local veterinarian to develop animal health protocols that fit your needs of the op your, the needs of your cattle and your operation. Working with a trusted nutritionist or expert who can make sure that the nutrition for your calves is on point because that will help keep them healthy and um, offer the right rate of gain. But also on the technology side, making sure you have the scales and weigh bar system set up so that you know what those calves are weighing so that you can formulate the appropriate ration and treat them properly if needed. Is there anything else you two would like to add and share with the listeners before we finish up the interview? I think get ahead of the situation. Um, start planning weaning 30 days out. Know that you've got your drugs on hand know that you've got your facilities in working order so that it's not hard to get cattle up and doctor them if they need it. There's some things I would say. Yeah, and, and, and have your feed beforehand. Ha have your tubs beforehand. Uh, don't wean and then, oh, the next day I got a calf of a snotty nose. Oh, I might need a tub. You know, let's plan, uh, do some research, uh, reach out to your veterinarian for a little help. Uh, we... As far as a representative for ADM, we are very open to help anyone. Uh, if you have a question or want, or want someone to come look at your set of cows, give, give us a ring. Well, thank you very much for both being on the show today and sharing your knowledge and experience about weaning with my listeners. Thank, thank you. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.